Hi, this is Miles Marie, the soldier of Mary. Today I want to give a brief theological introduction into what is meant by reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Many years ago, when I was at seminary, I did my undergraduate theology dissertation on reparation. You can see the document here, a theological analysis into the concept of reparation within Catholic spirituality, with a special consideration to both the message of Our Lady of Fatima and devotion to the Sacred Heart. So I'm not going to read the dissertation, it's a huge dissertation, but you can see here in the, on the screen uh, the, the contents of the dissertation, trying to look at what, it, what the word reparation means. Reparation when it is reparation made by Christ, and then reparation performed by us, you know, like for example, us joining uh, Christ in his work of making reparation to God the Father, uh, trying to look at where that is in sacred tradition, sacred tr scripture, looking at what makes reparation effective. And then the essay turns towards Christ as the object of reparation, so not our Lord making reparation to God the Father through his sacrifice on the cross and through his entire life, but us making reparation to Christ and particularly to his most sacred heart. And then finally, considering consecration and reparation to the Immaculate Heart. I'm going to read out the very last couple of paragraphs in the section about reparation to the Immaculate Heart, because it Although it presumes that you've read almost the entire dissertation, um, and it's not that long actually, is it? It's only 40 pages long, the dissertation. Although it presumes a lot of knowledge about uh, what has come before in the dissertation, I think there's still some really important points that I think will get home to you and which will maybe shed some new light on this concept of making reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Reparation follows wherever consecration has not been lived up to. As was mentioned previously, our Lord himself first effected the consecration of the world to the Immaculate Heart when he gave his mother to St. John, in whose place we all should stand. Whilst our Lord consecrated humanity to the Immaculate Heart, we through our sins, have not received our mother's patronage, and for this we must make reparation. Furthermore, reparation is due to the extent that we have failed to honour the Virgin's unique cooperation in our redemption, namely her De Congruo reparation, which, empowered by Christ, was to a degree that satisfied the entire sins of the world, or, according to the book of Genesis, crushed the head of the ancient serpent. Furthermore, because the Saviour has entrusted his blessed mother as the Queen of the New Israel, with the distribution of all graces, reparation to her becomes a duty insofar as we have not been truly grateful for each grace we have received. Reparation is also due to her for the offences against her titles, most particularly that of Mother of God and Immaculate Conception, which all false religions, heretics and schismatics in some way deny. Whenever we ignore or offend the dignity of God's masterpiece, we offend Almighty God, and to the highest degree, in that she is referred as his most beloved daughter. All reparation made to the Immaculate Heart is therefore also made to God. Indeed, it is made to him primarily. Reparation to the Immaculate Heart does indeed nonetheless offer consolation to Our Lady, and it can be said to apply retroactively as is used to describe reparation to the Sacred Heart as retroactively affecting our Lord in the Garden. It can be said that in the words 
Behold your son, that were given to Our Lady by her son as he died, Our Lady experienced the consolation of seeing in some manner her collective children across history, who at that moment consoled her through their standing beside her and whom the disciple embodies. Furthermore, because the Immaculata, like Christ, reigns body and soul in heaven, our acts of reparation affect the degree of her accidental beatitude in heaven. We cannot imagine how gravely offended Almighty God is when the Virgin Mary is slighted, nor how every sin we commit was a source of great sadness to her, a sadness she does not cease to recall even from beatitude, compounding further the offence rendered to Almighty God. Consecration and reparation to the Immaculate Heart must then be considered necessary to render God propitious before humanity and achieve the order of divine providence. This is why Our Lady called for reparation towards her Immaculate Heart of Fatima, a call that the Church must continue to respond to. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.